Life at the preserve is meant to slow things down. Here, we gather to get away from the city buzz, enjoy the stillness of nature, and share the importance of community. And through this experience, we learn to appreciate the disc golf just a bit more. Right at the pin, and Bradley Williams puts it in. Ricky's in bounds. This is the goal of Airborne, elevating our love for our sport through reminding us why we all started playing to begin with. So, from the first tee on Friday to the last putt on Sunday, let's cherish the moment, the highlights to come, and the peak of disc golf in Minnesota. The 2024 Preserve Championship starts now. Hello and welcome to round one front nine coverage of the 2024 Preserve Championship connected by Microsoft Teams. We are here on the 11th stop on the Disc Golf Pro Tour in Big Berry commentary, bringing you all the action, Paul Uliberry, Jeremy Colling. But before we get into the coverage, we want to tell you guys about a new show that is covering Paul Macbeth's 2023 European tour called The Macbeth Effect, and that will be airing next Tuesday, June 25th. But well, hold up. If you are a Joe Mez Pro Patreon member or a DGN Pro member, you can get early access to that. You can, you can watch can, it right yeah, now. Yeah, the first episode's ready to go. Yeah, let's let's definitely watch this video first and then go watch that if you fall into that category. But well, we have got a feature card consisting of Player of the Year runaway candidate, Ganon Burr, just on fire right now. His play is just next level bradley williams a is he the reigning champion or no no that was ricky wysocki yeah. yeah. but a former champion of this event and fun veteran to have on jomez today and really excited to show calvin lundquist a minnesota local young kid who can just throw the stamp off a disc it's That's gonna a good be, point. It's gonna be awesome watching him manipulate fairways. And here is the reigning champion, Ricky Wysocki. Awesome card that we have here in round one. Yeah, fantastic. A little of everything, really. Let's get right into it, Paul. All right. Well, hole one is par four, 708 feet. Not much to this one. You do have a little OB to worry about on the left, but you could throw it all the way over into those trees on the right if you feel like it all that safe and you'll see a lot of people over there the farther you throw it the easier this upshot gets cover this little out of bounds right here miss these trees and don't take a big skip and you'll find yourself putting for birdie on the first hole i believe ricky's won a couple times out here I mean, this is just a Ricky course. It really me. is. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's just a monster right yep. there. He's gonna have two fifty in, if that. Mm hmm. Yeah, and the closer you get to the left side, the better it is for that shorter approach. <laughs> it's hard to put it in perspective because you don't really have trees down this fairway, but that is quite far. Perfect position. From Austin, Texas, please welcome Bradley Williams. Yeah, the only real trouble on the right side is that pine tree. You'll see people kind of pull it sometimes and, and get over there, especially when there's mm -hmm. a little wind involved but there's nothing today i mean yeah. it's gonna be pretty calm once you get on the back nine the winds pick up a little bit for some reason mm -hmm. but for the most part this front nine easy well th th these are just dream 
conditions considering what we were expecting to be dealing with today. Yeah. It looked like there was going to be torrential downpour, thunderstorms, even concerned that we'd even finish the round with the number of thunderstorms that were supposed to be coming in. They just never came. Gets past that, and that's just, just right. fine. To the short grass? Okay. And that can be kind of annoying if you turn it over to be safe on that high grass side, having a slow run up, but everyone in the short grass. Gannon's probably 300 something away. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Like, I was thinking, yeah. yeah. Like, that's, that, that's, a, that's a putter, so. Okay. We threw that pretty soft, but Jeez. it could be 300 <laughs> with him. Just roll up and hit the pin for a tap and birdie on hole one. That's nice. Yeah, to put it into perspective how lucky we got with the weather, I'm pretty mm. sure within 30 miles of this place, some somewhere got five inches of rain in a short amount of time and flooded like Really? Yeah. So Wow. That, we didn't have a drop out here. That's cr that is really surprising that we didn't see anything considering that was so close. Right. Ricky's approach is primo. He also is going to hit the pin and finish in the bullseye for the birdie. And that was told to me by a local. So if it's not true, blame him. I'm not a scientist or a mathematician. <laughs> Never claimed to be germ. No one's holding you to that. You're the only one bringing it up right now. Cal early on the hyzer, and we've got a little putt off coming up between Brad and Calvin. These are always nice to make on the first hole. Just a bit low, but right on line there for Brad. And this is the area where you end up. You end up taking them on and you go a little bit deep with the skip. It ends up circle's edge. And Cal, wide right, a bit nervy, I'm sure. The back gallery behind first hole of the tournament. Hard to settle those nerves. Also, first time on Jomez, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. A big honor for the young man. I believe he got that spot because Kale had to drop out due to an unfortunate injury where he was designing a course and fell back on either a rock or a stick. He's not quite sure, but he punctured his hand and had to drop out of the event, unfortunately. Left hand, that is, which is it good It is news. left hand, that, that is the good news. Well, two is a tricky little par three, 315 feet with the mandatories forcing you down the middle through the woods. Starts to turn into a bit of a low ceiling right about here. And once you get through the, that first gap and that second little pinch, it's pretty much nothing in the way from there. Baby. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous shot. Just a little tiny baby flex. Slow down. As far as the line goes, that's exactly what you're looking for. Just a slight left to right and back left fade. Gannon. Missing the line by a mile. Making the mandatory. Oh, boy. That will proceed to the FPOT, I believe. Oh, Bradley, stop. Yeah, that is a Brad type of shot, if there ever were one. Beautiful touch. These drop zones don't play around. This one and hole 11 are both incredibly tough because all you, you have to go and just play the FPO hole, which they're playing in an elite series event, so it's not a gimme hole by any no. means. Yeah, yeah, you can see it was <laughs> tight gap. Yeah. And he had another early release there. He's going to take five here at best. And Cal's got some early nerves that he needs to work through. And Gannon's going to have a tough one. And 
and that'll help just a nice little tap in for the bogey or double bogey, excuse me. Gannon. And he's going to be up again. Unless it's Ricky. No, Gannon's going to be going. This is for bogey. Mm. Wow. Nice. A little three putt. That's a I mean, nothing looked good there for Gannon. The tee shot was bad. The approach was too long. That looked good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Obstruction in the way. Ricky does not care. Well, I got a little insight. Isaac Robinson told me, I played with him today, that Gannon had missed this hole nine times in a row. And so he uh, never okay. has played good really on it. And so it is in his head right now, mm -hmm. apparently. Oh, goodness. Well, Brad will take the birdie and walk away, and Gannon will be walking away with a double bogey, just like Calvin would have never guessed that. The hole ended up being played too over par by our group. Yeah, I don't remember the last time I saw anybody on our lead card three putt yeah within like circles and edge. certainly Unless not, it rolled or something you know yeah but like no that's just like, there that was a good old-fashioned three putt mm -hmm. that's just a blow by so, blow by exactly mm -hmm. or yeah. spit out sometimes yeah but the, yeah, i mean those count but it doesn't feel yeah, like it exactly, counts exactly a whole three par three 408 feet this is an awesome looking hole right here you do have out of bounds to the to the left if it leaks out of your hand but it's just whatever you can throw straight. These guys are probably going to go mid-range, get it on a little Anheuser. Keep it on that right side line. Mm -hmm. Look at that Anheuser. Yeah. Too far far right, though. Just pulled over for Ricky. I think that might have made its way barely inside C2 edge. But either way, well outside what Ricky's looking for. Yeah. Now, the Mississippi, which is off to the right side from where the players are, is actually 12 feet higher than it has been than it was last year, and a nice little flex line for Brad. Beautiful shot. Yeah, that was great. But it's actually so high that if you kick right, if you throw it in those woods, you could actually find find yourself out of bounds in the Mississippi River. Cannon going with a high stalled mid range. I can't imagine this staying on that ridge though. Wow, it just really kept going straight for so much longer than I, I anticipated. Pin high, and he's gonna have a chance to make a redemption putt. Yeah, he's got a short memory. I, I'm guessing he's going to make good here real soon on a nice putt. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to see that here for young Calvin as he puts this one just outside C1. All right, no, nothing spectacular here. We had uh, Bradley with a really nice drive, but these guys are going to have to start begging for it. Yeah. Ricky gets semi-aggressive. So it's tough with that hill right there. Correct. Calb's definitely considering that as well from this angle. Yeah, there we go. That's got to feel good. Great putt. Uh, left side chains again, and it blows by Yuli. What is happening right now with Gannon Burr? Ready. Savvy vet birdie there from Brad Williams. Just great angle control on both those last two holes off the tee. Nice pace on the putt as well. And it does clean up. He's got some figuring out to do on the green. Not many players on league card these days have putts that actually go above the band and in from 20 something feet away. Mm -hmm.
04 is a fantastic and challenging par four, 746 feet. The play is a big right-handed turnover with the drivers trying to get somewhere past these trees if you can. By the sidewalk would be fantastic. Just trying to give yourself some sort of look down this tight tunnel. Little ridge in front of the hill, or in front of the basket, excuse me. Just a really well-designed hole. Got a little check in here with Cole Radolin. Already two of the first three holes. It's this one, a nice little Anheuser. Oh man, that thing is holding. The trees, does it? Oh yeah. wow. Okay, now that's that area is safe. What is he trying here? There's a lot of area out here, which is safe. This is a nice little spot to be, though, because you can just get right Whoa. through there. Whoa! Yeah. What a shot! Pretty picturesque, too, with the flowers everywhere. What I wonder else? if he played there intentionally off the tee. No. Okay. Well, either way, he's taking a birdie now. Yeah. He pulls three down through four. So that's one way to play it. Brad's got this one tight and turned over. And that is... Nearly perfect. Good stuff. It's right yeah. where you want to be. If you could get right of those trees, that'd be even better, but it's so tough to do with how wide those trees branch out. Looks similar to Brad. Yeah, it certainly does. Very good. And if you go too long, Calvin might be in that spot where it starts to get a little bit tricky on the Heiser flip up angle to get through the. The yeah, tunnel. that's true if you go too long. I think he's in a spot, though, where he has just straight hyzer mm -hmm. all the way there. Yeah, Ricky's a little bit too tight with the turnover. And it'll be a tough road to save the par from there. I shouldn't say tough. I don't think it's going to be hard for him to get the par, but it's just there's no birdie from back there. Perfect spot. See, even from there, you almost want to be a little more left so you can you can fit the mm -hmm. hyzer in there, block off that right side. Just trying to find the gap. Ricky gets it yeah. pretty much into the gap. Like, for example, when you're dead straight on a on a shot. I'm sure the viewer is like, oh, that's a perfect position. Yeah, but, but you want to be, a, yeah. Yeah, you always want to be either left side of that gap or right side, oh. opening the gap a little farther. See what I mean? That's pretty much straight. Yeah, there. yeah, he, he found the hyzer line and did a very good job hitting the line, and now he's got himself a 28-foot putt. You're going to see him put some sort of angle on this. Yep. See what I mean? Yeah, that's just perfect. Beautiful. Yeah, not perfect. That's that little spot. Uh-huh. This time it's inside the circle, though. Gannon, 29 feet away for the birdie. And just a bit too wide on the approach for Brad. A little leaky, but that'll work. Yeah, that's fine. Looked like he had to stop his hand from mm -hmm. hitting that tree. Made it awkward. Giving it a little bid. Oh, yeah. Cute. Why not? When you get a touch like that, you can always give those a little half bid. But that was a full bid. Yeah. That was over the basket. And for back-to-back -back birdies, yeah, Cal Longquist canceled out the double bogey. Now he has a little momentum as well. Okay, in. Left side, though, and that's been the miss. Him back to even par. Him back to even par. <laughs> Yeah. Nice words, dude. It's Mr. Bird to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mr. Bird to all of us. <laughs> I 
I love seeing this basket sponsored by Hall of Fame baseball legend Paul Molitor, also known as Kale Visca's uncle. Pretty cool going to a preseason game with Kale a few years back and then seeing Paul Molitor, who was the uh, manager of the Twins at the time, walk out of the dugout, find where Kale was sitting, just wave to him. And I was just like, that's Paul Molitor. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was waving to me and then Kale was like waving back. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Anyways. Hole five, par three, 275, tricky little bugger here. Just put your putter on a little bit of hyzer, hit the gap, fade to the left, really. Makes the gap a little bigger for the right-handed backhand. You will see some people try to fit a flex forehand down that tunnel as well. Something understable or even overstable. For the most part, I feel like this hole's trying to trick you into throwing something dead straight. Yeah. And you really want to throw something with a lot of hyzer. Get it to the left side of that grip. Yeah, if you're throwing the backhand, I agree. Just try to force your way left. You don't need to park it. I think Gannon's figured it out. If he gets past that corner, yeah. Oh, okay. he tried to park it. Oh, he tried to park it, and he, well, but he's good enough to do that. He is. That was beautiful. A little bit right, and then he's outside Man. the circle. Yeah, inches away from hitting the, the enemy at the corner, which is about 40 feet away from the basket. Yeah, those definitely do a good well, job of guarding. This is what you're trying to do Exactly right here. what you're trying to do, that's yeah. That's perfect. Uh, it's funny to say that after seeing Gannon in bullseye, yeah. but that is the objective there. Well, I almost can guarantee that Gannon pulled his a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. These guys are too good to be trying to, to do that. Ricky, that is the shape for the forehand, but slow down. Okay, it did. You can see those trees on the right side of your screen there. If you're in the bad side of those, you almost don't have a look with how low the limbs branch out. All right, in a little trouble here. Oh, that could go in. Oh, off the bucket. Very good. Great approach. Yeah. Easy to play catch with him, huh? To get to three under. Off oh, right side. And that's two putts that were so close. Very to close. Brad. Yep. So close to being four under through five. But he's going to have to settle with two. And his approach was pretty close on that last hole as well, just catching the, the fairway tree. Yep. Either way, he's playing well, even though he's only going to show two down through five. Ricky in for the birdie. And that'll get Rick to three under, and Brad remains at two. And this right here will get Gannon Burr back under par. So funny to me. I think he could throw that same shot on hole two. <laughs> it's so the same fun. shot. I'm pretty sure Gannon's younger than Calvin. Or maybe they're the same age, but it's just funny to see them stand next to each other. Not that height has anything to do with age. Isaac Robinson, <laughs> five under through the first five, off to the races. Yeah, what if Calvin's like, 12 and he could grow that tall. <laughs> I don't think Calvin's <laughs> ever going to get to Gannon Burr's height. <laughs> Come on, buddy. You got it in you. I don't think so, though. Hole six is the toughest hole on the course. This is a par four, 695 feet. You have to keep it on that road if you want any chance to have any access down this tunnel for a look for the birdie. Seldom birdied, often bogeyed. And we're going to check in with Cole Rodon once again. He's there. Keep on that Anheuser. Land oh, jeez. That's good. That's man. beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just really anywhere on the road, you're happy. Still a really tough shot from here. Oh, that is so nice. Oh, my goodness. Bullseye. Can't do it any better. Really and that, can't. Yeah, I mean, and that's still hitting a little limb on the edge of the fairway, but that's how tight this angle is. It's just such a narrow, specific line that you have to hit both off the tee and on the approach. Ooh, and that's pulled by Gannon. He's going to need a Okay. Kick. Well, 
you know what? Oh my goodness, right to the road. Right where it deserves to be, huh? Ricky going with the mid range, but he loses it. He loses it in the bogey corner. Yeah, that is definitely bogey corner. I think it caught another tree and kicked to the edge, which could save him big time. Yeah, I mean, anything off the fairway. Okay, yeah, you just go through just there. Go through there. Yeah, that's all you got to do, I guess. Wow. This card is experiencing the nicer side of hole six. Except for maybe Ricky. And this is going to be fading out off the fairway. It just depends on... Yeah, I think Brad should find a, some way to the corner from there. Yeah, uh, Ricky, yeah, that's a good break. By not going deep in the woods, it sets yourself up to go forehand to the corner. And once you get to the corner, it should be an up and down a player like Ricky should get, should do every time. Ooh. Trying to go through that gap with speed. That is a tough thing to do. Give me a scramble from here, out for Brad. A little too tight, I think. Yeah, a little bit, but that got through pretty good. Should be able to jump putt or something for par, which is so good here too. Yeah, par par plays big time here. Cal doesn't want par. He's trying to go for the birdie. Oh, so close. The edge tree that you just saw Cole get yeah. by. And that was on like... Too much speed. You know? Yeah, that's the, the line Cole, was great. Cole's had a little less speed. Correct. More floaty. Allowed it to make that corner. That's a great approach there from... Well, well yeah. Well, well... Yeah, still got some work to do. Spoke a little too early there. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Your fake laugh is so good. Look at this. That's yeah. still really good. Yeah, and that's that's what you get. If you're off the fairway back there, you, you're going to have to pull some tricks out. Brad's in danger of taking a bogey. Does it have the juice? Oh, man. No, oh, but look cool. I'm telling you, Cal Longquist, real zippy. A lot of zip and zap on that player. Hmm. Cool. Going with a mid range. Brad missing right side, and there will be a bogey on his scorecard now. Ricky trying to avoid that fate. And that's what Ricky do. Beautiful putt. Oh gosh, his putt's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Yep. It's, yeah. I think Ricky started last year with a 15 under, 1080 something rated round one. I don't understand that. I. But that's what it takes out here. Yeah. It's when the wind is down. Lots of double digits. There's going to be double digits aplenty. When the wind is up, double digits is great. Cole Radon and Isaac Robinson, only two players in the field at 500. If disc golf is your game, make Gotta Go Gotta Throw your disc golf warehouse with a huge selection of discs, bags, baskets, carts, and more. Everything you need for the game you love. Online or at our Minnesota store. Gotta Go Gotta Throw.com, your disc golf warehouse. Hole seven, par three, 390 feet. Don't hit this rock. Make your way down the fairway with something a little understable drifted off the left side or something that highs or flips down the middle. Mid-range, fairway driver, whatever you throw straight really well. Traditionally, you have a lot of wind coming from right to left, mm -hmm. which makes this hole pretty tough today. Winds are down, so like I said, mid-range, whatever you're throwing straight. And there's a little, that little hillside kind of provides an opportunity to get aggressive and maybe go for the ace run. Yeah. Like... Gannon's just driving into that hillside. Smart play. Short birdie putt coming. Gotta think these guys are trying to make it. 
We saw James Conrad splash out for ace a few years ago. Ooh, is this stable enough? Start moving left. Oh, and that's helpful. Yep. Really nice. Pushing it all the way to the right side edge, though. Any more, and I don't think he's going to have a birdie look. Yeah, that's why I'm surprised nobody's taking it from left to right here. They're all throwing the hyzer flip because this is the mistake you get. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they didn't get burned. Kyle does. Let's see what Bradley Calvin. does. Calvin. Oh, I want to see what Bradley does. I know you said Kyle, I think. Oh, Calvin. Sorry. Yeah, I know what you meant. Yeah. Yeah, there's the left to right. Brad's just a thinker. That's the way that Brad plays disc golf. He is always thinking about the best possible angle, the best stability, everything. It, really, truly one of the best teachers. In, oh, without a doubt, he's brilliant. He's a very smart disc golfer. I'm just trying to give him his accolades here. Yep. Student of the game. When you're trying to get better at disc golf, one of the things that is so important is when you make a mistake, you need to be intelligent enough to know why that mistake was made. Don't You can't just burn yourself for making the mistake. You have to know, okay, why did I pull it left? And one of the people that I think without a doubt can tell you exactly what the mistake was every single time it is made is Brad Williams. Yes. And he could do it for you too if you're playing with him. He'd be like, "Oh, he does you, it all the time." Yeah, he does if he it. He knows when you're you playing. well. Yeah, he'd yeah. Be like, hey, hips opened up a little too quick. Uh huh. You're like, what? It's like they did. Okay, all right. Hey, thank you. I don't know what that means. But he was but, right. A hundred percent. He was then right. You just whip your hips. <laughs> <laughs> your hips are open a little too late that time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Okay, I'll try to get it right in between. <laughs> Hole eight, par four, brand new design, same tee. Same scary left side OB, and if you do go, go out of bounds, you are bound to take a bogey, if not double, because it is, you're not advancing much. But now instead of making the par five up the hill, we've got a basket within 23 feet of out of bounds, maybe less. Trying to get as much distance off the tee as you can and set yourself up for something like a 450 foot, maybe 400 foot approach. Cole's got a lot of green in his scork right now, Paul. Yeah, I'd call this probably about 400. Keeps this one wide, safe, knowing that the mistake would be going out of bounds early. See if he can find one from, looks like just inside the circle. Beautiful green here. Beautiful putt. Watch out. Now, I did see a few players pull it over to the right side in those uh, in the tall grass. So keep an eye on that because it is not easy once you get in there. Those are all stinging nettles for the most part. That was a nice shot from Gannon there. Trying to throw it as far right as you can and letting the disc hyzer back is a smart play. This is a risky play from Ricky. He's going to get away with it because he's got so much power. But the closer you get to that out of bounds on the left side, actually, that was just phenomenal. But if you do release it with Heiser, it, it better stand up. Yeah. Because if it stays on Heiser, you will find the OB left and you're not going to have a good time. Brad gets this one to ride. This is going to be very good as well, right in the middle. And yeah, these are the setup shots that you're looking for. Hurry. Don't want to have a high grass second shot. Okay, just gets out of it. Sweet. Still going to be a slow run up, perhaps. Doesn't quite get the full length run up that I'm sure he is a, used to. Doesn't need it. Does not need it. This thing is moving. Deep? Looks like it. Could be out of bounds. No. Stays safe. That's a great shot from back there. 
Bradley going with that same disc he just threw, so I'm guessing he's going to throw it right at that big tree over there. Yeah. Swing it in. I'm going to guess that was somewhere in the 440 range. And that is well thrown. From this distance, the tops of this, those trees are a pretty good mark. See that? Yeah, yeah. Get that height, and then it's really tough to throw something too far. Ricky just throws it so far. It, it, it just never looks like it's going to be that much farther than the rest of the guys who all throw far. Just... Ricky's just done such a good job over his career, micro tuning all of the intangible parts of his form to get just such a rapid fire release. Yeah. Finds another left side. Yes, sir. Well, we might have a star frame if I think, is it Gannon up next? Yeah, these guys are all really close. This would be a heck of a star frame in my opinion. Yeah, my card was one over par, so these guys are getting... If we were playing a four-man scramble, <laughs> we lost. <laughs> Ricky in on the left side. That brings him to five under on the front nine. A good front nine start for Ricky Wysocki. Yeah, you're really looking to go five. Awesome. Five, five. five. Get to that 10 mark. Super oh, manageable, super sure. easy to do, but this place can just get away with you with holes like hole six, even hole five. Yeah. You see hole two kind of bite these guys a little bit. Hole three gets away, and now all of a sudden you're scrambling. The pressure builds. Yep. You go out of bounds on that hole. You find yourself at even. Like, it happens really quick. It, but it, it, if, if you're not on it. But you can also find yourself at five, six, right. seven under really That's, fast. If you're not on it, you're going to get left behind, but it's very easy to not be on it. Yeah. This is a hole you feel like you got to get. This is the most often birdied hole on the course. You got 406 feet. Everybody just wants the ace. That's why I just, it's always I, Yeah, I don't even want... Just throw it in. It's all we care about right Ooh. now. Flash over to Cole Radolin. Maybe he throws it in. Currently the leader in the tournament at seven under. This is deep, but gets through everything. And that should reward Cole with 20 yeah. feet. Oh. Yeah, let's call it 25. Tricky. That's a nicely. That looks like his putt. That looks like his yard. <laughs> yes. Yes. We we recently filmed a putting game at Cole's house and it is a beautiful piece of property this better be insanely overstable it is oh good okay good for him knowing your disc because <laughs> i don't <laughs> but that was a lot of anheuser that was just the a most guy who possesses a lot of power ganon burr shaped ganon burr shot i've ever seen ricky's gonna go way wide with this one yep and this is looking pretty tasty if it doesn't get to the tree line first yes Uh-oh. Flipped up to flat. Opened up his hips a little too soon, I think. <laughs> Maybe too late. He's going to message you. Tell you exactly <laughs> why. Also wide, and with his amount of power, he's going to need to get sneaky through that oh, tree. It skipped once and then caught the very last tree. It's going to have to earn it through the woods. Fun putt over here, though. Yeah, there are some fun little lanes. And for practice days. Yeah, not for tournament days, I agree. <laughs> Brad says this is fun, practice or tournament day. A little turkey gets Brad back to four under par now. I shouldn't say back to. That's his lowest total yet. And there is 
a back-to-back -back star frame coming up here for our lead group to finish up the front nine. Got some money coming your way, Edge. Once again. This is a nice place for for the Edge program, yeah, I promise you. Jomez is gonna be handing out some cash this week, yeah. methinks. Oh, eight under Cole Radalin on the front nine, but look at that, a couple players at seven and a bunch more at six and five. This is gonna be one of those how many strikes can you bowl in a row type of events. Yeah. As long as the wind stays down, as long as the rain stays away, if the rain comes at any point, these tees can get slick and people can be off their line a little bit. Obviously, the wind is always going to be the X factor. But so far, we are seeing what this course can produce in terms of scores. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing. A lot of birdies. Ricky looks on point. Gannon's figured his putt out. Kyle's in, or I keep saying Kyle. Sorry, Calvin. Yeah, Calvin. He's new. Yeah, Calvin's uh, nerves have kind of gone yeah, down and right. he's feeling the flow and Bradley's just doing what Bradley does. That's right. Well, nine more holes to go here in round one in Clearwater at the 2024 Preserve Championship connected by Microsoft Teams. Come on back. See you there.